Well, several of Donald Trump's VP contenders, they are set to be in Atlanta for the first presidential debate. And joining me now is one of them, Florida Republican Congressman Byron Donalds. Congressman, welcome back. And how are you this evening? I'm doing good, Laura. It's great to be with you this evening. Good to see you. I mean, you have said that the former president, as frankly we're hearing from people who have helped to prep him as well, that he's got to focus on the economy. He's got to focus on immigration. He's got to focus on foreign policy in order to be successful and to appeal to the widest swath of voters in a general election. Do you think that the former president, Donald Trump, will stay on those messages? Uh, I absolutely do. The reason why is because Joe Biden has no defense for what he has done to America. Inflation has destroyed the purchasing power of all Americans. Our open, wide open border, not only has it allowed for tens of millions of people to come into the country illegally, but it has given operational control of our southern border to the drug cartels in northern Mexico. When you look at the world abroad, under President Trump, we were actually ending conflicts, winding them down, finishing them, no new wars. There are now two hot conflicts around the globe where if Joe Biden was a true leader, we wouldn't be in this point in the first place. I believe Donald Trump is going to make that case to the American people. It will be a clear distinction between the 45th president and the 46th president. Well, President Biden is going to have to address those concerns and also try to convey and persuade to the American voters that he is not responsible for the conflicts in which will be raised in the conversation and address fulsomely what you've just talked about. But there is a potential, as you have described those various things, both candidates have been the president of the United States and both will have opportunities to have their records questioned. What do you think is the Achilles heel for Trump that he's going to have to contend with in terms of what Biden could go after him about? I mean, well, obviously, it has been widely reported uh, Joe Biden's going to go after the travesty that happened in lower Manhattan about a month ago. Um, of course, he's going to try to talk about January 6th. But January 6th, 2021 is almost four years ago. The American people have been suffering under the presidency of Joe Biden. So when it comes to the American voter, what does a change in leadership in the White House means? It means a better economy. It means prices under control. It means a secure border. That is all the things that you need for a prosperous country going forward. Those are the kitchen table issues that the American people care about. Provided Trump will focus on the issues and be responsive to that. But up till now, we have seen, frankly, a lot of conversation from the former president at rallies and in interviews and beyond where he is focused less on kitchen table issues that you're describing, Congressman, and more on personal grievances, particularly as it relates to his own legal troubles. Do you think that that is going to be something that he will try to continue to convey during the debate? And if he does so, does that undermine his ability to convince the potentially persuadable voters that he is focused on them, not himself? Well, now, Laura, this is where I'm going to push back because I've been on the trail with the president. I've listened to his words, whether it was Detroit, whether it was the South Bronx, whether it was Philadelphia. I've seen him make this case to the American people time and time again. Of course, he talks about what happens in lower Manhattan, because at the end of the day, his constitutional rights were violated in that courtroom in Manhattan. And every legal a commentator, virtually every legal scholar all agree that that case is going to be overturned turned at the appellate level because he didn't even know what he was defending himself against. The Supreme Court just came out the other day and said that if you're going to try to convict somebody, that the jury has to be consistent about the actual crime. That did not occur in lower Manhattan. But at the end of the day, Donald Trump, of course, he talks about it. But the overwhelming message is about what his administration, when he comes back as the 47th president, is going to mean for the American people. And I guarantee you this, it will be significant significantly better for all Americans than the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris administration. Just for the edification of the audience, you're talking about the nuance of the New York jury instruction where they did not have to agree on the underlying predicate crime that would elevate it from a misdemeanor to a felony, but they had to be unanimous in their overall decision. I'll be very curious to see how that plays out at the appellate level and, of course, what the Supreme Court has to say about a very um, pressing issue right now. But to refocus on an issue you talk about and the justice system, Certainly he has talked about more than just that, but there was a moment today that's been getting a lot of attention, Congressman, and you were leading a roundtable discussion at a barbershop down in Atlanta, 
And although there's been a lot made about what Trump has said, I want to play for everyone what a black voter said when he raised his own concerns about there being a two-tier justice system. Listen to what he said as the voter about defendants feeling similarly railroaded, his words, by prosecutors, and a part of what Trump had to say. What can we do about those Fonnie Willis's and Alvin Braggs that that are, you know, right now sending some poor black person to jail for some crime that they're doing? Well, you know, it's an amazing thing when this happened. Wow. Uh, and, and as you saw, all the legal scholars say these are not cases. These are not cases should be brought. The black support has gone through the roof. Yes, it has. And I guess they equate it to problems that they've had. But since this has happened... Like uh, the mugshot. The mugshot is the best. Act. Now, of course, he went on to talk about the mugshot and, and, and uh, the popularity of it. But I was interested in the fact that he didn't fully answer the question that was addressed by the voter. And, and so I'm wondering from you and your conversations and in your you've been on the campaign trail with him. What specifically is Trump prepared to do to try to address inequality and inequities in our justice system? for the average defendant, as the voter was speaking about, and, and not for himself, who is situated quite distinctly as a former president. Well, first and foremost, in that issue, obviously, we've had issues in the justice system for, for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing it with a political lens. I think what the president wants to make sure we do is that your next attorney general, the political appointees at Maine Justice, and in working with governors around the country, you want to make sure that you have attorneys generals, you want to have district attorneys who are following the law, not trying to, you know, trying to beef up their conviction rate. They want to follow the law and then follow the, the actual evidence is that chain of evidence. That kind of leadership starts at the top. And I will also add, when you have a situation like we've seen, where you have a guy like Matthew Colangelo who left Maine Justice, the number three spot, to go be a frontline prosecutor, if you allow that kind of behavior to continue within our system of justice, you're not going to be able to achieve what I believe everybody wants, which is a blind justice system, a fair justice system that follows the facts and doesn't want to prosecute people, whether they might be black, whether they might be of a different race or creed or religion or whether it might be for a political purpose. Nobody wants to see that in America. Donald Trump doesn't want to see that in America. And so it starts with the people you put into main justice and then working with governors around the country, attorney generals around the company, around the country, excuse me, to make sure that the rule of law is followed and that it is not a respecter of persons. Tony, you're talking to a former prosecutor who's served both in main justice under Republican and Democratic administrations and as a line attorney. Um, and where Garland has refuted the notions that Colangelo was somehow or that he was somehow put in that position. But your larger point about the way in which political appointments are going to factor in is very important for voters to consider and likely to be addressed in this debate. I know we have very limited time, but I have to ask you because you are often now, um, you know, the, the preface for your name, not only congressman, but also is somebody on the short list for the VP candidate. I won't ask you the obvious of whether you would want to take the position. But you have received vetting materials, I understand. And I'm really interested on the kinds of information they're seeking from you. Did, they, did it give you any insight into the kind of candidate that they are seeking as a running mate? Well, Laura, and to be completely uh, direct with you, mm -hmm. I don't talk about that. I think it's I want to be respectful of the Trump campaign and what they're trying to accomplish. I don't want to get into nosy, those particulars. I want to be nosy, and I want you to answer I the know, question, Congressman, I know, about I know, that. I know. What did they ask you about? I know, I know, I, but I'm not going to do it because, you know, they have a lot of things that they're trying to consider, and I want to respect that. I will say that I believe that what the president is going to do, he's going to make the right choice, number one. I believe he's going to have a, a, a vice presidential nominee who's going to be able to not only hit the campaign, campaign trail with him, <clears throat> but then also when the time arises, when the need is there, when you have to crisscross the country, be able to take the president's agenda to all voters through our country. And then being successful this November, Donald Trump is back at the, as the 47th president, having a partner who can help get the agenda accomplished. Because campaigns are great, they're fun to cover, but at the end of the day, it's getting the business of the American people accomplished on Capitol Hill. Very difficult thing. And I know that the president wants wants a partner with him in the White House to be able to get that done. Congressman Byron Donald, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.